Hello students, today we will discuss about the posterior compartment of forearm. Now when you will see this posterior compartment of forearm, you will find there are 12 muscles are present. So today we will discuss the arrangement of these 12 muscles and we will see the orientation of the posterior compartment of the forearm. Now when you will see the posterior compartment of the forearm, it is also known as extensor compartment. Because these muscles are basically responsible for extension of your wrist joint. So these muscles are acting on the wrist joint and that's why it is known as extensor compartment of your forearm. And these muscles are covered by the deep fascia and this deep fascia become thickened at the back of the wrist and it is known as extensor retinaculum. So when you will do the dissection around the wrist joint, you will find that a thick band present on the anterior aspect as well as on the posterior aspect. This, these thickenings are known as retinaculum and these retinaculum keep these tendons into their own position. They prevent the buckling of the tendons, they prevent the tendons to come out during the action of the muscles. So you have one thickening here on the ventral surface is known as flexor retinaculum. Here you have a thickening is known as extensor retinaculum. Now the compartment is flowed by the posterior surface of the radius ulna and intervening interosseous membrane. Now when you will see this posterior compartment which you can see here that which are the structures forming the floor. So this is the posterior surface of your radius, posterior part of the ulna and you will have the interosseous green color membrane intervening between the radius and ulna and this surface of the posterior part of the interosseous membrane is also forming the floor of posterior compartment. That means these muscles which are present on the posterior compartment, they lies here on the posterior aspect of your forearm, clear? And these all are covered by the deep fascia. So deep fascia is present here, which you can see in this diagram, there is a sh shadow of the green color, which is showing the deep fascia. Now near the posterior part of the wrist joint, you can see this band. This band is known as extensor retinaculum and this retinaculum is helpful in keeping the tendons in their own position at the time of action. Clear? Now this posterior compartment is medially limited by the subcutaneous posterior border of ulna. Now this is the important thing to understand that all of you can palpate this part of your ulna. Now this border which you are able to feel here is posterior border of ulna. Now the question comes is that the extensor compartment is medial to this border or lateral to this border. So you will find that you have all the extensor muscles on the lateral aspect of this medial border of subcutaneous ulna. So this subcutaneous border of the ulna which you all can palpate here and this bone is the demarcation and this is the medial extension of the posterior compartment of forearm. So whatever the muscles you will read in the posterior compartment, they lies just lateral to this subcutaneous posterior border of ulna. Now here you can see that if you will have the cut section of the forearm, now here what you are able to appreciate that this is your thumb. So this is thumb, so this will become your radius bone and this is your ulna. Now here you can see the sectioning of your left forearm. Once you will take the section of the left forearm, you are able to see that these are the two interosseous border of the bones which are facing to each other and in between you are having this uh, membrane which is known as interosseous membrane. So this anterior compartment is for the flexor muscles and today we are talking about this posterior compartment which is known as extensor compartment of forearm. So whatever the muscles are present here in this extensor compartment, you will have the muscles in the posterior aspect and these muscles are arising from this part of your forearm, clear? Now the second important thing is that I told you that there is a subcutaneous border of your ulna. So this posterior subcutaneous border is the line of this compartment towards the medial extension. You don't have the extensor muscle here. You have the extensor muscles 
on the lateral side of this medial border of ulna. So, this posterior border of ulna, so this posterior border of ulna which is a subcutaneous border is a very important demarcation and it limits your extension of posterior compartment of forearm. Now, there are 12 muscles in the posterior compartment. So, this is the very important question for your exam. How many muscles we are going to read in the posterior compartment of the forearm? 12. Now, these 12 muscles arranged in the two group. One group is superficial, another group is deep. Now, when you will see the superficial, the superficial group is, group is further divided into the two part, lateral muscles or you can say the radial muscles, radial side or lateral side placed muscles and posterior placed muscles and posterior placed muscles. Now, these radially placed muscles are three in number. The posteriorly placed muscles are four in number and the deep group is having five in number. So, you will have three plus four, seven plus five, twelve. So, how you are dividing? Three plus four, seven muscles are superficial and five are deep. Now, in this superficial, you will have lateral or radially placed muscle and posteriorly placed muscles. Now, my dear students, you have to understand this concept that these deep muscles are not visible without removing these seven muscles. That is why they are known as superficial and they are known as deep. So, that we will discuss in the coming slide how they are arranged. Now, when you will see the lateral muscle, these are the three in number. So, these three muscles are brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis bravis. So, you will have two muscles here, one is longus, one is bravis. Now, this is both these three muscles when you will see, they all the three muscles arises from humerus. They all three muscle arises from humerus. Though we are reading the forearm, you know the forearm bones, radius and ulna, but still these muscles which are considered as the muscle of forearm is still arising from the muscle of bone of arm. Now, this is the important thing to understand and which muscle, which bone of the arm? Humerus. So, there are three muscles, brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis and all the three muscles are present along the lateral border of your forearm and they are known as lateral muscle or radial muscles of the forearm. Now, here in this diagram, you can see that these are the three muscle. Now, this is the most superficial muscle. This is brachioradialis. Just behind the brachioradialis, you will have extensor carpi radialis longus and you have the deeper most of these three is extensor carpi radialis brevis. So, we will see the detail in the coming slide of this class. Now, you have the uh, next group is posterior muscles. Now, I told you the superficial group is having uh, two group, uh, your lateral group and posterior group. Now, in the posterior group, you have the four muscle. Now, these four muscles arranged from lateral to medial. You are coming from lateral to medial side. Now, most laterally, you will have extensor digitorum. So, when you will see this arrangement, now this is your extensor digitorum. Now, this extensor digitorum is giving for uh, fingers. So, these are the digits. Then you will have extensor digiti minimi. This muscle will give digit to little finger only. Then you will have extensor carpi ulnaris and then you will have the enconius muscle which is here. So, these are the four muscles which are present in the posterior group. Now, again dear students, you will realize all these four muscles coming from this part of the humerus which is known as lateral epicondyle. This point is known as lateral epicondyle. Now, still, still no muscle is arising from radius and ulna. Now, this is the very important concept to understand that though you are reading the muscles of the forearm, you have seen three muscles plus four, seven muscle and still no muscle is arising from radius and ulna. Now, this, these seven muscles are known as superficial muscles 
because they are not arising from radius and ulna and you can cut these muscles and you can take out or you can separate them from the posterior side of the radius and ulna. And when we will see the posterior surface of the radius and ulna after removing these seven muscles then and then you are find there are actual muscles of the forearm which are coming from posterior side of radius and ulna and these muscles are known as deep muscles. So, how many deep muscles? Five muscles which are deeper and they are actually coming from either radius or ulna or from both. So, you have keep you have to keep this concept in mind that deep group is the group of muscle which is arising from one of the forearm bone or both the forearm bones clear if muscle is not arising from the forearm bone then it has to be in the superficial group of your uh, forearm muscle clear now what are these muscles one is supinator then you will have abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis extensor pollicis longus and extensor indices so now you will realize that in this deep group there are three muscles which are directly related to the movement of your thumb. There is a one muscle which is particularly for the index finger and one muscle is present in the upper part for the supination. Now here if you will see this is your posterior surface of your forearm bones. Now here what you are able to understand that this point is known as lateral epicondyle of humerus. Now the muscles which are coming from the superficial part are here. But when we are talking about the deep muscles, you will realize here that deep muscles are arising from the radius or from the ulna or from this posterior part of the interosseous membrane or from all the three areas. Here you can see that this is the supinator which is present here. Now this supinator is having origin from the ulna. Here you are having the muscles like abductor pollicis longus. Here you have the extensor pollicis brevis. This is extensor pollicis longus. This is extensor indices. Now when you will see these four muscles, what you are able to understand that these muscles are arising from this part of your forearm which is actually the forearm muscles those are arising from here are not coming from the forearm bone they are coming from the bone of your arm that is humerus so they are the superficial muscles and these are the deep group of muscles now here you have the three different images now here we will try to first see the lateral group so what is the uh, lateral group now lateral group is having the three muscles there are three muscles in the lateral group now the first muscle is the brachioradialis now brachioradialis is arising from the upper part of supracondylar line on the lateral side so this is lateral supracondylar line of humerus this is medial supracondylar line or ridge of the humerus now here you can see that this is the origin of your brachioradialis so this muscle is brachioradialis so where is the origin humerus now this is the second muscle which is again arising from the lateral supracondylar line below the origin of brachioradialis and this muscle is known as extensor carpi radialis longus now deep to that you will have one more muscle now this muscle is arising from the lateral epicondyle and this is known as extensor carpi radialis brevis. So my dear students, you have this image based question to identify the muscle. So what you are able to understand that there is a lateral supracondylar ridge which will give rise to the two muscle from the humerus in upper part of the lateral supracondylar you have brachioradialis. In the lower part of supracondylar you have extensor carpi radialis longus from the epicondyle you have extensor carpi radialis brevis. Now when you will come to the posterior group. Now in the posterior group you have all the muscles arises from the 
lateral epicondyle. All the muscles arises from lateral epicondyle. That is why lateral epicondyle posterior surface is known as common flexor origin. Now, from here you are having the muscle, this is a small triangular muscle, this origin is origin of the anconius muscle, this is anconius. Now, on the lateral side you are having the origin from this lateral epicondyle and this muscle is extensor digitorum, this is extensor digitorum. Then you will have one more muscle, this is extensor digiti minimi. This is extensor digiti minimi. So, this is your extensor digitorum, then you will have extensor digiti minimi. Now, these muscles all are arising from lateral epicondyle. So, posterior group arises from lateral epicondyle. Lateral group arises from lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus and lateral epicondyle. That means this lateral group and posterior group which is commonly known as superficial group is arising from humerus. Still we are not having the part of your forearm bone in the picture. Now when you will reach to the deep group, now in the deep group you will have the supinator. Now this supinator is arising from the two part, one is coming from the humerus, second part coming from the ulna. Then you will have this abductor polysis longus, then you will have extensor polysis brevis, extensor polysis longus and this is your extensor indices. So, these muscles are deep, but you will find the origin that these muscles are arising from the forearm bone. So, I am saying this repeatedly that if you want to label any muscle in a deep group, it has to come from radius or ulna or from both. If muscles are not taking origin from the radius and ulna, then either it may come from lateral group or posterior group, clear? So, this is the very important classification of the posterior compartment of forearm muscles. Now, this line is very important that you have the seven muscles in the superficial group. Out of these seven, if you will remove the anconius, which is a small muscle, the remaining six long muscles, they come from the lateral side of the humerus and have not enough area available at the lateral epicondyle. That is why brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus comes from the lateral supracondylar ridge and adjacent part of intermuscular septum. So, we have seen that there are total 7 muscles in your superficial group. Out of these 7, you have the 3 lateral placed and 4 posterior placed muscles. And I just told you that all these 7 muscles comes from the humerus. Now, out of these 7, anconius is a small muscle, but remaining 6 are the long muscles which are having long tendons. Now, in these 6 muscles, you have the origin of majority from this lateral epicondyle. But there are two muscles which shift their origin on this lateral supracondylar ridge. Why they shift their origin? Because of the lack of space in this point. And which are these muscles? Those shift their origin in upper direction. This is brachioradialis and this is extensor carpi radialis longus, clear? Remaining all the muscles like extensor carpi radialis brevis and your muscles of the four posterior uh, area comes from the lateral epicondyle, clear? So, this is the question of your exam, which muscle of following is the deeper muscle? So, deeper muscles we have seen there are three muscles, those are going to the Polex that means to the thumb. So, these muscles either coming from the ulna or radius. But if the muscle is not coming from the ulna and radius, there are seven muscles and they comes from the humerus. Now, we will see the origin of all these 12 muscles in a nutshell. Because if you will read the origin separately, it is always difficult to remember. So, we will see the origin as a whole. 
So, first we are discussing the origin of superficial group where you have the lateral or the radial group where you have the three muscles brachioradialis, extensor, carpi radialis longus and brevis. So, I already mentioned in brief about the origin, but again if you revise this, the brachioradialis comes from the upper two-third of lateral supracondylar ridge of humerus. Extensor carpi radialis longus, it is coming from again humerus, but lower one-third of the supracondylar ridge. So, I just told you that these two muscles shift towards in upward direction on this lateral supracondylar ridge because of the lack of space at the lateral epicondyle. So, in upper one third you have the origin of brachioradialis along with the intermuscular septa, lower one third is having origin of extensor carpi radialis longus. Now, you have the last muscle on this lateral group is extensor carpi radialis brevis, but brevis means small and these mus this muscle is deep to the extensor carpi radialis longus. So, you can see it is your brachioradialis, it is extensor carpi radialis longus and in the lateral side you have posteriorly placed brevis muscle. Now, it arises from this point which is known as lateral epicondyle of humerus. So, in this way you have the three muscles of the lateral side and what is the origin? All the three comes from the humerus brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. Now, the origin of posterior group. Now, in the posterior group you have four muscles. Now, all these four muscles have common origin and that is again from lateral epicondyle. So, from the lateral epicondyle you are having 1 plus 4, total 5 muscle. 4 muscles which are written here and which is the one? Extensor carpi radialis brevis. So, these are the five muscles which are arising from the lateral epicondyle. So, these five muscles extensor digitorum, extensor digiti binimi, extensor carpi ulnaris and anconius. So, these five muscles are taking origin from lateral epicondyle. So, when you are reading the origin of extensors, please make a chart and read it as a whole that brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus comes from the supracondylar ridge of the lateral aspect while the extensor carpi radialis brevis of the lateral group and the four muscles of the posterior group comes from the lateral epicondyle of humerus and they all considered as a superficial muscles because when we will talk about the deep muscles, they should take origin from ulna or radius or both, clear? Now, so what are the deep muscles? You have the five deep muscles, first is supinator. Now, I am not uh, specifying the area, I am just telling you here which mus uh, muscle arising from which part of the bone. So, here when you will see the supinator, when you will check the origin, it is taking origin from the humerus. But it is considered as a deep muscle, so one part should come from ulna or radius. So, you will realize that it is arising from the supinator crest of ulna. So, because it is arising from the ulna, it now considered as a deep muscle. Now, remaining five, four muscles, they are arising from radius and ulna. Now, radius and ulna com combinedly giving origin to only a single muscle in the back. Now, when you will see this back area, you will find only one muscle which is arising from radius and ulna both and that is abductor pollicis longus. Now, this is a very commonly asked question, which muscle of the posterior compartment of forearm taking origin from both radius and ulna? So, there is only one name and that is abductor pollicis longus. Now, when you will see the origin of extensor pollicis brevis, it arises from the radius only. When you will see the origin of extensor pollicis longus, it arises from ulna only and when you will see the extensor indices, it arises again from ulna only. So, in the whole muscle of the forearm, what you are able to understand that the five muscles are actually arising from the forearm bone and out of these five, there is only one muscle which is arising from both forearm bone that is abductor pollicis longus. So, these deep group muscle arises either from the radius or ulna or both 
with posterior part of the interosseous membrane. So, you when you are doing dissection and we will find out these muscles, you have to be specific enough to check the origin of these muscles. Now, now you will have the idea that if you are doing dissection and you will find a muscle coming from the lateral epicondyle, it should be come under the superficial group because deep group cannot be coming from the is not coming from the humerus whatever the deep muscles are there you have to check on the posterior surface of radius and ulna only now when you will see the origin i told you will have the detailed origin of the supinator because it is a different part of the origin because it is arising from the arm bone as well as forearm bone so when you will check its origin, the humerus is giving origin to the supinator from the lateral epicondyle again. So, whatever the muscles you are reading in the back of the forearm, again this question comes, which are the muscles arises from lateral epicondyle. So, in the lateral epicondyle, all the three components, we have the superficial group, we have the deep group, in the superficial you will have the lateral and posterior. So, which muscle of the lateral come from the lateral epicondyle? Answer is extensor carpi radialis brevis. Which muscle of the posterior compartment come from the lateral epicondyle? All the muscles, all the muscles of posterior compartment. Which muscle of the deep group comes from the lateral epicondyle? Answer is humeral head of supinator, humeral head of supinator. That means lateral epicondyle of the humerus is contributing in all the three areas one muscle of the lateral, all the muscles of the posterior and one muscle of the deep group. Now, this lateral epicondyle of the humerus, that is why known as common extensor origin. Apart from this, uh, it also arises from annular ligament of superior radio ulnar joint. Now, when you will see the main uh, origin that is from the ulna, now, I am saying that it is considered as a deep muscle because one part should come from the forearm bone. So, here you have the origin from the ulna. Now, on the ulna, you are having a bony point is known as supinator crest. So, this is the main origin of its bigger head. So, there are two head of the supinator. One is humeral head which is coming from the lateral epicondyle. Second is known as ulnar head which is mainly coming from the supinator crest. So, in this diagram, when you will see, this is your lateral epicondyle and this is your supinator crest. Now, when you will see the actual, actual location of the supinator crest, where you will find the supinator crest. So, to locate the supinator crest, you always trace this interosseous border or you can say the lateral border of ulna. Now, here you have interosseous membrane. So, this is known as interosseous border. Now, when you will trace this interosseous border in the upper part here, in this upper part, you will have this area. Now, this upper part is known as supinator crest. So, where you will find supinator crest? When you will have the supinator crest, you have to trace this interosseous border. In the upper part of the interosseous border, you will find the supinator crest. So, this is actually the upper part of this interosseous membrane where you are having the origin of supinator from the ulna. So, this question asked so many times in your exam, mark the supinator crest. So, you have to just trace your interosseous border of the ulna and in upper part, you have to mark it as a supinator crest. So, this supinator crest will give the ulnar head and from this lateral epicondyle, you are having the origin of humeral head of supinator. Now, there are three muscles in the deep part which all are related to the thumb and these all are known as pollex muscles. So, this is extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, abductor pollicis longus. Now, there is a confusion how to remember these muscles. So, I am having very simplified uh, theory about how to remember. So, first let us see that suppose this is your posterior surface of radius and posterior surface of ulna. So, this is your radius, this is your ulna. Now, if you will see the posterior compartment, 
you will find that thumb is close to the radius and it is having distance from the ulna. So, but obviously thumb will come towards the radial side. So, this will be your thumb. So, this is your thumb, this is your radius and this is your ulna. Now, you are having the three muscles and I have to draw the three muscles on the posterior surface. Now, see one muscle is extensor pollicis longus. Now, as the name suggests extensor pollicis longus that means it is a longer muscle. Now, which is having a longer muscle if will I draw if I will draw one tendon here and one tendon here which length is more the length of this tendon is more why because the distance of the thumb and ulna is more as compared to the distance of radius and thumb. So, but obviously this will become longer why because it is coming from ulna. This will become shorter. Why? Because it is coming from the radius. So, the tendon which is coming from the radius is become the tendon of your extensor pollicis brevis. That brevis means short. And the tendon which is coming from the ulna is automatically become extensor pollicis longus. Again, try to understand this that you are having the thumb you are having the two bones radius and ulna. You know that thumb is lies towards the radial side. Now, you have to draw two tendons. One tendon is coming from the radius, one is coming from the ulna. Now, the distance of the ulna and uh, thumb is bigger or the distance is more between the thumb and ulna as compared to the thumb and radius because thumb is very adjacent to the radius. So, the tendon which is coming from radius to the thumb the tendon which is coming from radius to the thumb is shorter and the distance between the ulna and radius is much more as compared to this distance. So, this tendon is become longest clear. This is just to remember it is not actual concept actual concept come on the basis of their insertion okay? that we will discuss later on. But just to memorize it for the exam purpose you have this concept in your mind that because the thumb is near to the radius, so radius will give rise to the brevis and because the ulna is having a distance from the thumb, so the tendon which is coming from the ulna is longus. clear. So, this is the one thing which should be very clear in your mind. Now, the second thing comes about the origin of abductor pollicis longus. So, now what we are, we how we distribute? We distribute one extensor we we give extensor pollicis brevis to the radius clear and this is the ulna so we have already marked extensor pollicis longus on ulna as compare as per the distance of the thumb now you remain with the one more muscle abductor pollicis longus now you don't have its counterpart in the forearm you have only abductor pollicis longus because abductor pollicis brevis present in the anterior compartment. So, this abductor pollicis longus is a single muscle in the forearm. There is no counterpart present in the posterior compartment. So, without having any discrimination, we will give both half part to the ulna, half part of the radius. Clear? So, we have now distributed three muscles to the two bones. We have distributed three muscles to the two bones how you distribute one one and half and one and half one and half to the radius one and half to the ulna how one and half the brevis origin of brevis and part of the abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus and part of the abductor pollicis longus so in this way you can remember the origin of all the three muscles clear because so many times students are having this confusion that there are always difficulty in memorize the origin of these three muscles. So, my very simplified version is that you just first write down the three name of the pollex muscle, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus. Now, when you will have the three pollicis, you have to divide one and half, one and half. So, you have to first keep in mind that you have two extensor, one should go to the radius, one should go to the ulna. Now, how to decide? The thumb is having closer to the radius, 
so the distance is short so you will give extensor polysis brevis to the radius and you have the more distance with the ulna so you will give extensor polysis longus to the ulna in this way you have divided one one muscle now you have the single muscle abductor polysis longus so you distributed this muscle half to the radius half to the ulna so in this way you are now able to understand that abductor polysis longus taking origin from the posterior surface of the radius ulna and interosseous membrane while the extensor polysis brevis is taking origin from the posterior surface of the radius with interosseous membrane and ex extensor polysis longus is arising from the posterior surface of the ulna with adjacent part of interosseous membrane. So this is the simplified version to memorize the origin of three polysis. Now you have this question, suppose you have this question identify these two muscles. Now we are not talking about the insertion irrespective to this insertion part you have to identify only on the basis of their upper attachment so here what you are able to see is that this is the ulna and this is the radius now if i have to mark these two muscles i have to check that it is a posterior compartment of the forearm and you can see that this muscle is coming purely from the ulna with adjacent part of the interosseous membrane and I, I just told you that the distance of the pollex is more with the ulna so this is extensor polysis longus and this is the muscle which is coming from the radius so it has to be extensor polysis brevis because we are not talking about the insertion on only on the basis of the origin we can identify now the muscle which is coming from the radius has to be extensor polysis brevis and the muscle which is coming from the ulna has to be extensor polysis longus. Suppose if you have a muscle which is coming from both radius and ulna, suppose you have a muscle here which is coming from both radius and ulna and this muscle is going downward, then this will become your abductor polysis longus. Why? Because abductor polysis is having half on the radius, half on the ulna. Now again you will have these three diagrams, identify the muscle. Now suppose I have to identify this muscle. Now this is your brachioradialis because it is arising from the uppermost part of lateral supracondylar ridge. Now this lower part of the supracondylar ridge is not having any attachment here. And we know that this is the place for extensor, it is the place for extensor carpi radialis longus. So this area is for extensor carpi radialis longus. So what is this muscle? This muscle is brachioradialis, clear? Now in this diagram if you have to identify the muscles, so here you can see this is the lateral supracondylar ridge where you have the two muscle and this is the lateral epicondyle where you have the three muscle. So what is the uh, layer of the muscles you are able to appreciate here? Now this muscle is brachioradialis, below that you have extensor carpi radialis longus and you know both of them coming from the adjacent side of lateral supracondylar ridge and deep to that you have extensor carpi radialis brevis which is arising from the lateral supracondylar ridge. Now here also you can see that the tendons are going downward. So these tendons can be identified later on with the help of the insertion. But in today's class rather than we are concentrating on insertion, we purely concentrate on the origin of the muscles of your forearm, clear? So whenever you are reading the back or the posterior compartment of the forearm, you have to first uh, see that there are 12 muscles, these 12 muscles are divided into the superficial and deep group. How? That the deep group muscles should have at least origin from one of the forearm bone and the superficial group is having 7 muscles, those are not arising from the forearm bones, they are purely arising from the humerus. Apart from that, when you are identifying these muscles, you can check their origin and you can identify that muscles if coming from the radius and ulna they has to be in the deep group. So this is the important concept about the 
posterior compartment of forearm. So, this is all for today's class. Thank you.